Good day and welcome back to Ed's Garage at Merton Hyundai. Today we are looking at the Sandstorm Ultimate Santa Cruz. So happy to finally get a chance to do a full walk around video review of this vehicle. Now I'm not gonna be doing a drive review because I've already done the test drive on the preferred trim, which of course in Canada has exactly the same drivetrain. It's a 2.5 liter turbo, uh, making about 280 horsepower, 311 foot-pounds of torque. And of course it's mated to that eight speed wet dual clutch transmission all-wheel drive system, H-Track, awesome, awesome little vehicle. Uh, but today we're just gonna go over the features of the Ultimate trim. So here it is, we're gonna start at the front. Now I do wanna apologize for the condition of the vehicle. Unfortunately, our pipes froze in our detail bay, so we're not able to clean anything right now. Um, so I finally have a real excuse. <laughs> um, also, <laughs> with these crazy freezing temperatures, unfortunately I got a nice layer of ice here. I did try to clean it off, but yeah, it's stuck on there pretty good. Uh, so I can't really open up the tonneau cover. But let's start with the front end and go over some of the features on this beautiful Santa Cruz. Now we do of course have the really nice daytime running lights that are integrated into the grill. Let's have a look, see what that looks like. So as you can see, it's got this really kind of neat look uh, that kind of morphs into the grill, which is super cool. Now, of course, with the Ultimate, you get the forward-facing camera. As a matter of fact, it's got the full 360 surround camera, which I'll show you in a bit. We do, of course, have LED headlights and high beams, and they are a projection light. Sorry, I know you can't probably see through there, but take my word for it, they are projection. We've got the forward-facing radar here for the adaptive cruise control system. And then up in the windshield, sorry for the sun glare, guys. Uh, you can see we've got the forward-facing camera there. That's for the lane keep assist and also for the autonomous emergency braking system. And we also have uh, automatic wiper so the little infrared sensor is right there for that all right coming around the side here you can see the little easter egg santa cruz on the on the wheel rim there or on the wheel well rim thing on this thing <laughs> we got the uh, 20 inch aluminum alloy wheels i quite like the styling on this one a lot of people like the uh the, the smaller wheels better i prefer this one i think this is a good look uh, it does have the michelin uh primacy all, uh, all season tires, the, the Michelin uh, Total Performance, they're called. So um, those, of course, are a low profile, 245, 50, 20 inch wheel. Now we got the marker lights on the mirrors here. You got the camera on the mirrors as well. Of course, that's for the uh, 360 surround system. This one does have blind spot monitoring in the mirrors. It does have the proximity entry and push button start. And there's even a light inside of here, which you won't be able to see right now, uh, but that lights up as you approach the vehicle. Now, one thing to note, as we are passing around the vehicle, we do have these side rails here. So if you wanted to add a roof rack system, like a kayak carrier, bike carrier, something like that, you can very easily do that with this vehicle. You've also got a sunroof on this one and your little shark fin antenna on the back. And then coming around to the back, you can see we've got the little uh, glass here that does open up, a little window there. Uh, and all the way around the back, you got the cool little sort of arrow shaped tail lights. Of course, those are LED as well. You got steps in the bumpers to get up onto the bed. Uh, this one, of course, does have a trailer hitch, as I mentioned. And then, of course, H track and Santa Cruz written all along the back there. Backup camera is underneath the handle, easy to find, easy to clean. And one of the things I really like about this is it does have the dampened tailgate, so it opens nice and softly. Uh, now, in regards to the tonneau cover, Basically what you would do is you just kind of push this and it'll retract all the way into the front there. Uh, it does unfortunately take a little bit of box space out of there. It's about 18 cubic feet that it uses up. Uh, so if you take that out, obviously you're gonna have a little bit more space. It's fairly easy to remove. It does require some, uh, some nuts and bolts to be taken out, but uh, other than that, pretty simple to take out. Now we got a underfloor sort of storage trunk here. And then on the right hand side, we've got more storage with a power outlet, so that's 112, sorry, with 120 volt power outlet, I believe it's 150 watts, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, maximum 150 watts, and that just kind of clips back into place just like that. Sorry, my hands are very cold. <laughs> now, in the box, we do have the movable cleats, so you just kind of pull out the center and then they slide and snap uh, all the way to the front there. And on the left side, we have another one of those storage compartments. Of course, there's no uh, power outlet in there, but there is a storage compartment. A uh, little belt here so you can easily pull the tonneau cover back. You'll notice there's also LED lights on both sides of the tailgate as well to light it all up. And then in the tailgate, you got these little sort of cup holder y kind of shaped things. Um, I don't know how well they would work, mind you, but they are there. Now, with the tonneau cover, you can also stop it halfway if you leave the handle uh, or if you pull the handle back to this position, it'll actually stop halfway before it goes all the way in. 
Now, another thing to note about the tailgate is it is actually really easy to lift. Uh, you can do it with just a couple of fingers. It's quite light, uh, but also you'll notice these little um, belts that hold it up or the lines that hold it up, cables, they can be moved. So if you take this clip off, it's really easy to do. You just pull on this clip and you kind of slide it over and you put it up here. What that does is it actually raises the back part of the tailgate up to the same height as the wheel well. So if you want to lay a four by eight sheet of plywood in here, you can. Check out my other view on the preferred trim uh, where I actually do measure that all out for you. All right, so we're gonna hop in the back here. Now I did set the front seat to my sort of driving position, um, but before I jump in, I wanna show you a couple cool things. For one, I don't think anyone else has ever mentioned this, but the door comes all the way down to the bottom of the rocker panel. And you'll notice just in this like nasty, gross weather, just how clean this is. Um, it's actually got a seal right here, so it keeps that clean. And the reason that's important is because when you're getting in and out, if you accidentally hit your leg there, you're not gonna get a dirty pant leg. So that's why they do that on all four doors. Now the cup holders for the back are in the doors. You can see we've got a little cup holder right there. Uh, in the center console, you can see we've got two USB ports that are lit up when the lights are on. And of course, two vents, uh, which is kind of nice. And both of the seat backs do have pockets and both of them are solid. So if you have kids back here kicking the seat, you're not gonna feel it nearly as much. Right. I've gone ahead and flipped on the uh, light so you can see that is a nice lit up um, USB port uh, system there. So that's kind of nice. Now we can also flip up the seats and it's a 60-40 split um, and it'll actually lock into place when you put it all the way up. So to release it now, I'd actually have to pull that tab again. Uh, we got a little bit of storage under this side. On the other side, there will be the jack as well as uh, the, lug, uh, the, the wrench to pull off lug nuts and stuff. So that's all underneath the other seat. Now, unfortunately, the seat backs don't move. They are fixed in place, and there's no cup holder armrest in the middle like most Hyundai vehicles. However, all of the, um, uh, the headrests are adjustable, and you can see we've got the little window here that we can slide open as well. And even that little window has the, uh, the heater lines on it. So if you need to defrost the whole rear window, it will do so. All right, so having a seat in the back of the Santa Cruz Ultimate, uh, first thing I can say, it's actually pretty comfortable. The seat back isn't too straight up. Um, I have pretty good lateral space here. Um, it looks like I can very easily put three, you know, relatively thin people in the back uh, or three children, shouldn't be, shouldn't be a problem. Also, you'll notice I can put my feet underneath the front seat. It's a nice flat floor, lots of space there. I do have a little bit of space in front of my knees. I would say that the space back here is adequate. It's, uh, it's not spectacular, it's not Tucson or Santa Fe level, uh, but it's perfectly adequate. Uh, we do also have on the ceiling here, you can see we've got a LED light, uh, which is kind of nice. So all four sides have grab handles and then the interior lighting, all LEDs as well. And a nice soft cushiony armrest on the door. So pretty comfortable back here. All right, let's check out the front. All right, so before we jump in the front, let's have a look at the power driver seat. Now it is just a manual seat on the passenger side, unfortunately, but the power driver seat's kind of nice. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten way power adjustable seat. And then of course the two way adjustable headrest. Uh, the seats themselves, of course, are covered in a leatherette. Uh, pretty nice, it's got these uh, cool little design on the uh, piping here, which you, if we'll get in close, you can see. And the nice little sort of chrome uh, strip on here as well. They're a pretty, pretty nice looking seat as well. The doors themselves also have nice cushioned armrests, and then the center armrest is also nice and cushiony. All right, taking in an overall view of the interior, it's a beautiful layout. I think they've done a really, really great job sort of incorporating sort of the, you know, the vents with the door there, the dashboard kind of wrapping down around and under here. And then of course we do have ambient lighting in this vehicle. I'm not sure if you can see the purple on my fingertips there, um, but you can actually change that lighting uh, I think there's 65 different possible colors, and there's a few places that you'll find the ambient lighting. You can see it down here as well, uh, so pretty cool. Now let's start with the buttons on the door and then move across to the right. So on the door itself, of course, you have the um, just the regular sort of window controls, mirror controls. They are auto up and down on both of the front uh, windows, which is kind of nice. And then over here, you can see we've got the uh, dimmer switch, the box lights you can turn on right here, and then the traction and stability control. All right, having a look at the steering wheel, of course, all of your media controls are on the left side here, all of your drive controls on the right, we'll get to that in a second. So you got your voice recognition, which works for both the built-in system as well as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You have your mode button, which allows you to switch between the different sources of audio, your volume, your up and down buttons for track or next or previous preset, uh, your answer button, and your customizable button. This one can be set to do various different things. Usually we just set it up to reject or end a phone call. 
on the right hand side, I was about to say left, on the right hand side, you've got the uh, buttons here for the instrument cluster menus, which we'll go over in a bit. And then you've got your set cruise speed, resume uh, or increase speed, decrease speed, adaptive cruise distance so it's able to follow behind the car in front of you and maintain its distance on its own and then lane follow assist so that lane follow assist button that is for slow speeds there's also lane keep assist um, and you'll see both of the icons for that on the instrument cluster right there so when one of those is green now first off that lane follow assist that's the left one so i can turn that on and off um, when it's green that means that the camera on the windshield up here can actually see the lines on the road and maintain its position in the lane and on the back of the steering wheel, we've got the um, paddle shifters, of course. So this is gear down, this is gear up. So that works, well, it works all the time, but if you put the vehicle into drive and then slide it over to the left, that puts it into that manual mode. If we then push the stick forwards, we can gear up or gear down. Now keep in mind, this one does have the eight speed wet dual clutch transmission. So when you are in that mode, it actually puts the gear that you're in right here where that P is, because uh, right now we're in park. So you can actually see what gear you're switching to and from. And then behind the steering wheel, of course, you have the automatic headlights here. Now it's um, auto headlights, but it's also auto high beams. Um, also keep this in the full on position because when you shut the car off, everything turns off anyway. And the nice thing about this is you'll have taillights during the day. Uh, but yeah, auto high beam. So if it detects that this car in front of you, it'll actually shut the high beams off. And of course it is a one touch turn signal, which then turns on the camera system, which is kind of cool. Check that out. So the left hand camera comes on when you put your right or when your left signal is on and then vice versa when you put your right signal on. Pretty cool. All right, having a look at the console, let's see how much space is in here. Throw a glove in there so you can get an idea. There it is. Pretty good amount of space. It's not huge, but it's still quite roomy, kind of very usable space. And then in front of that, you got your ventilated seat, your heated seat, and your heated steering wheel. Of course, ventilated heated seats uh, for the passenger side. You got your power e-brake. Now, this is pretty cool because you can set the e-brake and then it'll turn itself off when you put the car in drive or reverse. You've got auto hold here, which holds the vehicle in place when you take your foot off the brake. You got your camera system, which can enable even when, when you're not in reverse. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, you got your hill descent assist, so that works up to 40 kilometers an hour, maintaining your descent speed. And then you got your drive terrain and drive terrain toggle switch, which we'll go over momentarily. Now, in regards to that camera system, when we press that, that actually turns on the backup camera as well as the top-down 360 camera. And you'll notice on the 360 camera, we have dynamic steering lines uh, that show the outer throw of the vehicle, not just where the vehicle is going to end up. Um, so it's really easy to back up. And of course, you got the dynamic steering lines on the big screen as well. Now, this is kind of cool. You can actually change the image to give you a top-down view, whether you're in drive or reverse. So if I put the car in drive, it shows us a top-down view of the front. And then, of course, we can also see, this is kind of cool, a blind spot um, views for parking, like parallel parking on the, against curbs and whatnot. And of course, you got the uh, gear icon down here um, if you want to change some of the settings for that. So top down, top down um, parking distance guides, and uh, also display settings for color, contrast, and that sort of thing, or brightness and contrast. And then also you can zoom in and out of the 360 camera. And I'd like to point out just how nice the 360 camera is. There's no cut lines. There's no sort of split lines in the corners. It's a very clear image all the way around, even though those cameras are kind of caked in dirt right now. Um, and it's really, really easy to use. All right, coming back down to the console, of course, you got your dual cup holders. They do have the little springy retractors here for smaller and larger cups. And then in the little center console area here, you'll notice it's lit up, but also um, this is a wireless charger. It's a ventilated wireless charger that can charge 40 watts of energy. Very, very quick wireless charger, one of the fastest in the business. You got your USB port right here for USB playback of um, tracks from a, from a flash drive or for connecting your phone for Apple CarPlay Android Auto. You've got a 12 volt power outlet here uh, and you have the, that's just for the wireless charging and this charger right here for tablets or USB port for tablets and phones, a uh, higher wattage USB charger. Above that, of course, we have our dual zone automatic climate control. Now, before you complain that there's no buttons, keep in mind, once you've set the temperature, you really shouldn't need to ever touch this again because the car is very good at getting to temperature. So don't waste time playing with the fans and whatnot because when the car knows that it's capable of warming up quickly, it'll increase the fan speed on its own. Once they're at temperature, it'll decrease the fan speed so they're not so annoying. You can, however, change the aggressiveness of the automatic system. So if you'd rather have a little bit less fan noise, uh, you can just decrease the speed of the fans just by changing the auto system here. And that way you don't have to throw off the auto system, as you can see now. 
Now, the only other thing, other thing to point out here is you do have a diffuse button. This is pretty cool. So what that does is it diffuses the air through all of these little holes all along the dashboard. Check that out. So that's on the passenger side mainly, but there is a little bit more right here on the driver's side as well. Skipping the big screen for a moment, we're going to go up to the rearview mirror. It is an auto dimming rearview mirror with home link buttons for garage doors and gates. Uh, you have USB, yes, we have LED lights up here as well. And then you'll notice, and of course you can turn those all on. You'll notice we got the call for roadside assistance and the SOS button. So those are part of the Blue Link system, which in Canada is free for three years. Uh, Blue Link allows you to remote start the car from a cell phone, find it on a Google map, unlock the doors, lock the doors, all from a cell phone, phone from anywhere in the world as long as you have internet uh, and as long as the car has an internet data connection through its cell connection. Uh, but also, if you get into an emergency, you can hit the emergency uh, SOS button, or if you have an accident, it'll automatically call emergency services for you. Uh, and then the roadside assistance, of course. Roadside assistance is free for five years anywhere in North America, but that button will work for the first three years for free without subscription. Right. Both of the sun visors do slide out, and they do both have mirrors, and they do both have lights, and a nice black headliner as well, which is kind of cool. Um, you've got your sunroof in the ultimate as well now if we open up the sunroof using the automatic system it will stop short but then we can press the button again to go a little bit further a little bit of a hidden tip there um, and the reason it stops short is just to stop that kind of buffeting noise all right the last thing we're going to look at will be the stereo but first we're going to go over some of the menus in here now first off when we change the drive modes you're going to see uh, if I press the drive terrain button, I can switch between drive modes and terrain modes. So that's this button down here. And then as I change it, let's, let's have a look and see what the sport mode does here. It actually gives you a cooler, sort of more aggressive looking instrument cluster. Sorry about the, uh, the movement there, guys. Let me just set this camera a little straighter. There we go. Um, and then, of course, I can go to smart mode and normal mode. So normal is just normal. Sport mode is going to tighten up the steering wheel and give you a little bit more low end feedback, low end throttle response, that sort of thing. Uh, smart mode is going to look at uh, how you're driving and then adjust accordingly. And then the terrain modes, I got snow, mud, and sand. Snow, mud, and sand, they're going to adjust the all-wheel drive system, the traction control, um, even the takeoff speed to kind of mitigate slippage and, and increase its abilities in those different scenarios. All right, now other stuff about this screen in particular. So these two buttons here allow me to go through the different various menus on that screen. So this one here will slide along the top of the screen. You see we've got four different potential things we can look at. And then the up and down arrow one here will actually allow us to go through the different screens within those menus. So first off, we're looking at the lane keep assist uh, and adaptive cruise info screen. So this one kind of pointless because if you can see that means your eyeballs work, just look out the front windshield. If I drop it down once, we can see the attention levels. This is monitoring our attention level, seeing if we're, if we're getting tired using steering input, brake input, uh, and length of time on the road. Uh, and then it could actually suggest that we take a break if it thinks we're getting tired. Press that top button again, takes us over to the trip computer. All right, so this particular screen shows us our digital speedometer, but if I bump up once, I can see our accumulated info. So our uh, amount of distance traveled, our average fuel economy, and how long we've been on the road for. And then above that, we have basically the same thing, but since the last time we refueled. And above that, we have our drive info, which is kind of like the same thing, except a trip computer that you can change uh, consistently. And it also says hold OK to reset. Uh, so that is basically the up and down button. You just press it in and it resets. Let's hit the top button to bounce over one further here. So now it's showing our compass. This will also show, our, show us our turn by turn directions when we're navigating with the built-in navigation system. And then we have our uh, all wheel drive info screen. So this will show basically different power levels going to each one of the wheels as we accelerate forward. So if I put it into drive here and uh, press the gas, you can see it went uh, put power to all four wheels right away. All right, and then if I drop the down once, I get the tire pressure monitor. So that's what's in there. Um, now let's have a look at some of the configurations on the screen itself. Of course, on the bottom right, you have your total overall odometer, uh, currently what drive mode you're in, how much uh, you have until an empty tank. Of course, your digital, or sorry, your analog uh, speedometer and your analog tachometer. But we can change the layout of these things as well. So what I'm going to do on the center screen here, I'm going to go into setup. And again, I apologize if I miss the, uh, the button with my fingers here. I am looking through the camera. Uh, I'm going to go to vehicle and then cluster. And then I'm actually going to go select theme, unlink it to the drive mode, and I can actually choose one of these four themes. So this is 
of course, the classic A. So classic B looks like that. Classic C looks like that. And then we have cube. So the kind of weird looking one. <laughs> All right. And then finally, lastly, we have the center screen. Now, this is a beautiful uh, 10 inch screen. So it's the same size screen as what we have over here. Uh, but of course, this is for the infotainment system. We're going to close the sunroof, take a little bit of that glare out. Um, but yeah, right now it's got a uh, film on it just to protect it. So in case you're wondering why there's so much dust on it, that film really uh, does unfortunately attract dust. Uh, but we're going to start on the home screen, the home home screen, which is this one here. And you can see it says guest because there is different user profiles that you can set up here. And you'll notice along the bottom, we've got three little dots because there are three home screens. So this is the one on the far left. This is the one that it always goes to when you hit home. Um, I can slide over to the left here and I've got uh, quite a few options and over to the left again, a few more options. So first off, we'll start with um, uh, this main screen. So we've got a little bit of a map info here. We've got the time and date. Uh, we have the stereo information and who's currently logged in. If I swipe over left one, I get access to the map, which is the same as hitting the map button here. Uh, nav menu, which is the same as hitting the nav menu button. Um, volume up and down, which of course is the same as on the steering wheel. I can shut the whole thing off here by holding the, the power button, um, which also will turn on and off the stereo if I just press it and release it uh, without holding it. I've got a customizable button here that I usually set up for phone projection. So that's Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, but you can also do a few other things like make it go to the home screen, uh, switch to Bluetooth audio, phone, phone projection, Blue Link, quiet mode. Quiet mode will actually uh, shut off the rear speakers and then dampen the front speakers. I can also make that turn the display on and off, uh, enable ra HD radio data, or just do nothing. But I'm going to put it on phone projection. So that's a quick and easy way to get back into Apple CarPlay. And there you can see the uh, the quiet mode. That's the other spot to access that. Um, on the right hand side, or in the middle here, on the right hand side, in the middle you have phone projection. So that of course will bring up Apple CarPlay, Android Auto when you have a approved device connected. Here's a voice mem memo where you can actually record your own voice and then play it back to yourself later. So it's kind of like a reminder. Climate just takes us into an overall climate information screen. And check this out you have activate upon washer fluid use. All right, so that does actually set the vehicle into recirculate. I don't think it actually says down here that it's recirculating, but that's what that does. Uh, but I can see a sort of an overall view of the climate control system here, which is kind of, then I can put it on auto um, again by pressing here and it shows me there that it's on automatic. So pretty nice. Um, and if we back out, we have valet mode, which only works with blue links. So you have to have blue link enabled for that to function. But what it does just reduces some of the access that a valet would have to the vehicle and reduces some of the capabilities of the vehicle. HD radio data provides you with information about traffic, um, data for weather. So it uses Doppler radar and even fuel prices. So if I hit the fuel prices, um, it, can sh it can show me, you know, nearby uh, fuel stations. And if I tap them, um, it even allows us. Oh, I'm doing it wrong. You hit go. There we go. So you hit go and then you can go set as destination and it'll navigate to that route. Pretty neat. All right, radio takes us to the same screen as the radio button down here and media again, same screen as the media button. Um, basically this will take us to the AM FM satellite radio. Media will take us to media playback from a cell phone or a USB stick. Setup will take us into the setup, which we're gonna go to momentarily. Here's where our Blue Link uh, notifications will be found. Uh, Blue Link information, which again, only functions when we actually have Blue Link set up. So we can get weather through Blue Link as well. Uh, we can check vehicle diagnostics, maintenance history, uh, maintenance notifications, and then our Bluetooth set or Blue Link settings. The user manual just brings up a QR code that we can then scan uh, to bring up a electronic uh, version of the manual. But let's go into setup, have a quick look here. So under vehicle, uh, we have our driver assistance. So that's all of the, you know, safety assistance. Um, so driving convenience, for instance, is your highway drive assist, highway auto speed change. So it'll actually using um, uh, navigation from the, uh, or using information from the navigation system will slow down for curves and whatnot when you're on uh, cruise control, which is kind of cool. Uh, we have our speed limit info here. You got speed limit warning. So if you increase, if you go over uh, the speed limit, which it's going to show you on the screen as well, you'll get a warning, but you can actually increase or decrease uh, the offset, which is kind of nice. Uh, change our warning timing, our warning volume, our driver attention warning, which I talked about earlier. One thing I forgot to mention, this does have a leading vehicle departure alert. So if the vehicle in front of you starts to drive away, you'll actually get an alert saying, hey, you know, the car in front of you is leaving. Kind of cool. Uh, our lane safety, we can have it assist or just warn, or we can turn it off completely. Blind spot, um, a 
assist, you can actually have it give you the blind spot view, the safe exit warning. It'll determine if a car is coming down the, down the road once you've parallel parked, and it'll warn you that, or it'll prevent the rear door from even opening, uh, but it'll also warn you before you actually open up your driver's door uh, or passenger door, which is kind of cool. And right here it says, uh, provides a warning and vehicle control when a risk of blind spot collision is detected. So as long as the active assist is enabled, um, if there's a car in your blind spot and you start to go over, it'll kind of put you back into your lane as well. And of course you can have it on warning only or turn it off. And then parking safety, you got rear cross traffic safety, uh, provides warning and emergency braking uh, when a risk of a rear cross, tra cross traffic collision is detected. So it's gonna pick up cars and pedestrians coming from the sides and it'll actually apply the brakes if you don't. Um, so that's pretty cool. Cluster, we can actually uh, change the illumination from here as well. We've already gone into the theme. Uh, we can change the service interval, or reset that as well. You can even enable the welcome sound, which we'll do. And you can enable and disable different uh, warnings on the instrument cluster. Uh, climate, is, here's where the uh, recirculate air thing upon act, uh, uh, windshield washer fluid use. I've got that enabled now. Uh, seat, you can actually have the, uh, the seat automatically uh, turn on the steering wheel warmer. So you can see here, steering wheel warmer adjusts automatically based on climate settings. Uh, and then seat warmer ventilation adjusts automatically based on climate settings as well. So if it's really, really cold, um, it'll actually detect that, you know, based on your climate settings here, it'll actually turn on the heated seat or the ventilated seat for you automatically. So we're going to leave that enabled as well. Under lights, here's where we can change our ambient light. So this is pretty cool. You can dim it while driving, but we don't want to do that. We can link it to the drive mode, which is super cool. So <laughs> we're definitely going to do that. So if we have it in sport mode, everything's going to go red. Um, you can also change the brightness in here as well. Uh, and of course you can customize the color of the ambient lighting. We've also got headlight delay and high beam assist here. That's where you can enable and disable those things. And we'll also put the one touch turn signal. That's where you tap it and it flashes on its own. We're going to leave that on five flashes. Under door, we have our auto lock, auto unlock, and our two press unlock. Uh, so pressing it once will unlock just the driver's door. In the convenience, we have a rear occupant alert, which we'll enable. So if the rear doors are opened at any time, it'll remember that. So when you shut the car off, it'll remind you, hey, you might've left something in the back. And then our wireless charger, which we can enable and disable there as well. That's all under vehicle. Navigation is just navigation settings. Sound is of course, where you can change the things like the, um, uh, the tone, so your um, uh, balance treble or bass treble mid-range, uh, premium sound. Of course, this vehicle does have the Bose audio system. It sounds awesome. Um, and of course, you have dynamic speed compensation. So as you increase speed, it'll increase the volume a little bit as well. Startup volume limit, we definitely want that. So if you crank the tunes, the next time you come in the car, it'll actually have it at a lower volume so you don't freak yourself out. Position. Uh, we already went for, through tone, guidance. Uh, you can change volume levels depending on whether or not the system is talking to you. Radio noise, we can put it on max noise reduction. So if the uh, FM channel is not spectacular, it's going to try to you know correct some of that for you as well. It'll probably also use HD radio to do that. And then, of course, anytime you get a warning, it'll lower the volume for you. And you can also have it lower the volume when you're parking. So if you're in reverse, it'll, um, or even when you have the front camera on, it'll lower the volume so you can kind of concentrate a little better. And then our connected devices, Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, you can enable, disable those things there. Device connections is where you would actually connect those things up. User profile is where you can set what you want the car to do when you get in, uh, the media system, the ambient lights, that sort of thing. Uh, voice recognition is more like a thing that just goes over what you can say. Display allows you to enable and disable uh, night mode, um, but also uh, the dynamic blue light filter, uh, which is super cool. You can actually have it um, turn on a blue light filter uh, automatically when it gets dark out. You can customize the home screen icons. You can customize the split screen system. So what apps are actually capable of split screen, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, button is where you can uh, set up the custom button as well as the custom mode button and the custom button on the steering wheel. Blue link is where you would go to actually set up blue link. And then general is where you can go. <laughs> Sorry, my fingers are really dry. This is where you can go to do uh, updates to the system. Um, it doesn't do over the air updates yet. Uh, the only car that we have that does that right now is the Ionic 5. All right, so uh, I mentioned I was going to show you something and I've completely forgotten what it was. That's right, it was the split screen. So if we go into the map, so right here we've got a full screen map. Now this map, by the way, you can actually set that into 3D mode, which we definitely want to do. When it gets dark out, this will actually turn into night mode. You'll actually see stars up here. It's pretty cool. 
but we can actually split screen this. So we have the stereo on the one side and the map on the other. Now we can also have other things here, uh, as you can see. So there's multiple different views, uh, screens that we can see. But hypothetically, if we're on the stereo and then we switch to the stereo screen, it's gonna swap those around. So it keeps the map on the right side. Now, of course, you can also have the stereo fill the screen just by hitting that button right there. We're gonna have digital audio or HD audio turned on here as well. Now, if you wanna go through the actual radio stations, uh, you do have little buttons right here. You can navigate through them, uh, or you can also use the voice recognition to set stations as well. And that's pretty much everything, guys. I don't think I missed anything. I know this is a bit of a longer video, but thank you so much for sticking around and watching the whole thing. If you like this video, if it helped you at all, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and please do comment below as well. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. I do try to answer every question I see. Uh, some questions I simply can't, but I'll, I'll definitely try. Again, thank you so much for watching. Have a happy, happy new year. I hope you had a great Christmas, and stay tuned for future videos. Thanks so much. Take care.